Uh, you all came back. Welcome back. Um, if you weren't here Tuesday, I'm Professor Hafner. I lecture this course. But now that the other instructors aren't around, I'll let you know that I don't really care about academic formalities. So if you like, you may just call me Dr. Hafner. I'm OK with that. Um, this, OK, so you guys are into word clouds. I get it now. OK, that's, that's an impressive level of word clouding we did, where I spent God knows how much money on access to that. And they were excited I was going to use it for academic purposes. And I was like, <laughs> they said, you're going to take attendance? Do you want feedback on the results? I was like, no, no, it'll be all right. Just, uh, just give me access to it. Um, OK, so last time, uh, we talked about three types of kinematics. Three kinematics. Uh, let's see, we did the simplest one. We did the motionless uh, object. And uh, two, so that was, you know, that was just to warm up. And then we did uniform motion. So you may see that word in a problem. Uniform basically means the velocity is a constant. So we'll keep writing vx because we're in 1d. Just to remind ourselves we're in 1d. Eventually we'll get rid of the x and just call it velocity. Then we talked about how you can have finite intervals or you can have derivatives, etc. And then at the very end, I guess we talked a little bit about non-uniform motion. All right, and basically that means vx can vary. So vx will change, and we've got to figure out how are we going to describe that? What math are we going to use to explain it? So to think about it a little bit, we've got to go to, oh, dumbass, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, <laughs> we've got to go to the timetables of history, physics history. Where are we here? There we go. Here they are. So if you had to throw uh, history on a graph and put big scientific advances on it, it'll look something like this, the major part. So we'll look at this throughout the year and see when things happened, all right? It's my thing. I'll put on it whatever the hell I want to put on it, all right? <laughs> so this is a very Eurocentric introduction to the history of physics, right? A bunch of stuff happened. We're not really sure. Let's talk about Europe. OK, Thales, OK? Uh, so Thales, first scientist, because he was the first one that did an experiment to figure out how everything worked. That's kind of the idea. People before him kind of looked at the stars and tried to gauge it, and et cetera, et cetera. Lots of great, uh, bad ideas about geometry. But they said, no, let's actually do an experiment. Right? So that makes him the first, first uh, scientist. But the first person to do our passion right now, our passion is kinematics, was uh, Strato. Strato the physicist is what he was called. And uh, he was trying to, he basically came up with the idea of acceleration. He figured out that things are actually speeding up when they fall through various sort of interesting sort of experiments, right? So he's like watching something like, let's watch this waterfall. And when the water is up at the top, it's staying together. And at the bottom, it's breaking apart. And if it's going the same speed, it wouldn't break apart. So it must be speeding up. So that's the, he had the idea of acceleration. The one actually I like better is he said, if you drop a rock in the sand, if you drop it from kind of low, it makes a little dent in the sand. If you drop it from high, it makes a bigger dent in the sand. Same rock, same sand. What's the difference? It's that the thing is speeding up. So they needed ways to figure out that things were speeding up. So Strato figured out that things are speeding up, the fundamental concept of acceleration, but then we now need to do it mathematically. And then nothing happened, and nothing happened, and nothing happened, nothing happened. I'm sure like sociologists have talked about why this happened. Nothing happened, nothing happened. Finally, Galileo. So Galileo was really the one that figured out mathematically what's going on with acceleration. <coughs> So Galileo, Galileo um, basically said, and this is important for your homework problems, all free, and I'll tell you what I mean by that, um, objects fall uh, the same way. OK, he didn't get into y. Y, of course, is this person is y. We're just talking about kinematics this week, so we're just describing it mathematically. We'll get into y later. They all fall the same way. Their position is proportional to time squared. That's the proportional symbol. It actually isn't alpha. It's its own special symbol that means proportional. Um, and the way we look at that is we say, uh, consider uniform times. <coughs> 
So Galileo, you know, this is not easy for him to do. He doesn't have a PASCO lab set up to track velocity in real time. He had to think of a way to do this. And what he came up with was make like a chart. And instead of focusing on watching something go through separate times and seeing it go faster, he said, let's watch it go through uniform times and look at the spacing. Right? So you just kind of turn it around like that. You say t is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, say seconds. And if something falls, uh, it should x, how far it goes, should go as t squared. As we know from kinematics, if you've had a little physics, you know it goes as t squared. Uh, so the x would be like also 1. If it went 1 meter in the first second, then 2 would be 4, 3 would be 9, 16, 25. So we wanted to test this, uh, but it's a little hard to do at full acceleration of gravity. We now know 9.8 meters per second squared, kind of fast, or 32 feet per second per second too fast. So what he also figured out is you could slow down this acceleration by putting something on a ramp. Right? So that's kind of uh, what he has here. Good match. All right, so here I have, instead of falling, we're rolling. Let's say it's close enough. And here's theta. And what you find is the acceleration you would normally fall at, let's call it, oh, I don't know, how about g? Okay, uh, becomes, the acceleration becomes, we're not doing vectors yet, I know, uh, g sine theta. So as theta gets small, the acceleration gets small. Okay, so that's how he slowed it down to where he had a chance at doing it. Okay, and he set up something a little bit like this. Basically, he's letting things roll down ramps, and he was making them hit bells. Okay, I was going to get bells, but it's not close enough to the holidays yet. You can't buy a bell right now. It's just not possible. I went to Michael's, you know. Um, and he said, if I set the bells like this at 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, um, they should hit at uniform uh, moments in time. And he was able to listen to that, right? He had to listen to it and see if it goes ding, 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 ding. So that's what we have here. We have this thing. These are set at uniform spaces of time. Uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. And we're going to let this go from here. And I took out 1 because it's not really going fast enough to make a noise. Okay, and this is not incredibly loud. But it's better than what we usually do, which is nothing. It's an improvement over last year. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. Close your auto oh, close your eyes. It's fun to watch. Focus on your ears, and we'll see if this is uniform time. Here we go. Did it sound uniform to you? Did it sound uniform? Dink, dink, dink. No. Wow. Lots of nose. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. So, how do you know if it's uniform or not? That's actually the next part of the story. Is the story goes that Galileo would sing hymns and use his own personal sense of rhythm to decide if they were uniform. And this is actually also the reason it took 2,000 years, is we had to have a physicist with a good enough sense of rhythm to do this experiment. Okay, <laughs> So let's see. Holy, holy, holy. See? When you sing, it actually is more convincing, isn't it? Now, we really only sang hymns because, you know, he was in prison and the guards outside from the church were like, what's going on? And he was like, oh, just singing hymns. Nothing. Nothing's going on here. <laughs> Sun goes around the earth. It's all cool, you know. Because I think he did that part first, and this was later when he was, you know, not real popular. Okay? So that's the basic idea, is things really do go if you let something accelerate. And again, everything accelerates down because of forces and gravity in a couple weeks. But for now, we just accept that things accelerate when they go down. You can lower the acceleration on a ramp, and that means that things, uh, that position goes as time squared. Okay? So let's see. I will uh, get this out of the way, and now we're going to look at it a little more seriously and mathematically, because I know that's what you want to do. Here we go. Just a quick disassembly. All right. You ever wonder where you get these old-timey pointers that we have? They're all fancy. They must be from the original lecture hall. These are like cane, or those are fishing poles from Academy. So people that still fish, like, you know, it's a Huckleberry Finn novel. You can still buy those. All right. 